So I lived for 35 years searching for peace, searching for the true God who is going to show me that he loves me more than anything in this world. Through the Quran, through the teaching of the Prophet of Islam, I was never experienced something like that. So when I get the Bible and from the doctor pharmacy, before I get the Bible, I lived for a whole year searching for God, asking my, myself who God can be. I had terrible headache. Mm. Every day, go to the, the, chemist, the uh, doctor pharmacy to get headache tablets. So, and finally she gave me the Bible and she gave me the headache tablets. I took the Bible in one hand and headache tablets in one, another hand. When I started reading the Bible, I met with the Lord Jesus Christ face to face through the Sermon of the Mountain in Matthew chapter 5, mm. telling me about love. Love your enemy. Not kill your enemy. Not kill your enemy. So the word of the Bible, the word of Jesus Christ, in that evening came to me it's just like a, a beautiful rain. And so you began to find the peace that had eluded you all those exactly. years. Exactly. For peace, forgiveness, I felt for the first time that my sins has been forgiven Hallelujah. and I being justified already by the blood of Jesus. I was lived for 35 years with guilt, the guilt of my sin, the guilt of, 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 of um, living as a, as a lost person. I don't know who is going to forgive my sin. I don't know who is going to rescue me from the punishment of Allah. I, am, I don't have no assurance that I can be in the right place, you see, Actually, to live there. In Islam, you never really know for sure whether you're saved or not. Mohammed didn't know whether he was saved or not. Uh, absolutely not. Isn't Absol that something? Yes, this is true. Now, when you finally got to the United States, you were given religious asylum in this country. Yes. And you had a remarkable experience in Washington, D.C. when somebody said that there was a, uh, a Muslim imam who was going to be speaking at uh, a university. George Mason yeah. University, And you yes. went to hear him speak. Yes. And what did you find out about I went there. I, I shocked. I found this man. He was a Baptist pastor from Texas. A Baptist pastor from Texas? Yeah. And he converted to Islam. <laughs> and he now preaching, you see, for Islam in George Mason um, uh, University and sharing his, his, his uh, testimony. So, and after he finished his speech, uh, he asked if there is anyone he has question to raise his hand. I find my, my hand it was the first hand. So when I stood up, I did ask him, Sir, um, when did you take that decision to leave Christian to become Muslim? He said, eight years. I said, oh, this is like myself. And my next question, since you convert to Islam and you left Christianity, did any church or any Christians order to kill you because the Bible said that the penalty of Christian apostasy is death? He's, he said no. Did the FBI persecuted you here or arrested you here or tortured you here because you left Christianity to become a Muslim? He said no. I said to him, sir, I'm a human being like you. And I have the right to take a decision to change my religion or my faith like you. And I was a Muslim like you. I was an imam as you was a pastor. And I took the same decision you took. But the difference between me and you, that I was treated by Islam. I fired from my university. I kidnapped by the secret police. I've been tortured. I lost my family. I lost my country. And the sword of Islam is on my neck wherever I go. Why? Because the Quran said so. <laughs> that the penalty of a Muslim apostasy, it's death. That is incredible. The difference between Christianity and Islam, that, that he leaves Islam and everyone tries to kill him and kicks him out of his family, he leaves Christianity and none of that happens to him. And yet Islam is supposed to be the, the religion of peace. He's still enjoying his life in, in, in America because of the freedom brought to this country through the Christian and the biblical principle. Yes. You know, the point that you made a few moments ago about uh, no one in uh, Islam knowing for sure whether they're ever saved or not, yes. unless they die as a martyr, Yes. then, then they have the assurance of salvation. Absolutely. But otherwise, true. there's no assurance. Even, again, Muhammad did not know for sure whether he was saved or not. Uh, that, yes. that is a horrible thing to think you're yes. having to earn your salvation, and no matter how hard you exactly. work, you still don't know. Exactly. You still don't know. After Muslims, a fanatic in Egypt, attacking a Christian church, I was so upset. I was so, I was so little um, 
baby Christian. I, I did ask her why people you can defend your church, you defend your people. She what she said to me. She said to me, Mark, I want to say something to you. Our God, He is not in need for us to defend Him or to kill others to defend Him or to defend His church. Our God is strong enough to defend Himself, His name, and His people. Mark, most of our viewers have never read the Quran, and they don't know really how different it is from the Bible. So fill us in. Tell us, give us a comparison here between the Bible and the Quran. Yes, the Quran, uh, as uh, Muslims believe, consider the holy book of Islam. The size of the Quran, it's exactly like the size of the books of the New Testament. And the book um, contains 114 chapters. Which are called surahs. Which called in Arabic term, Arabic language, surahs. Okay. Exactly. And uh, the book is considered, uh, um, as the Muslims believe, the word of Allah who was revealed directly from Allah to Muhammad through the angel Gabriel. Okay. Now, what, what, how does it differ, though? I, I mean, an average person, let's say an average Christian, has read the Bible, and he's aware that when you start reading the Bible, the Bible has lots of stories, and it tells this story and that story, and, and, and uh, the relationship with God, the nature of God is taught through stories. But you don't find that in the Quran. No, actually, the Quran uh, it's, uh, wasn't really organized logically. And when the Quran usually uh, discuss about a specific story, for example, like the story of Abraham, or the story of Joseph, or the story of Moses, you're going to see that these stories, it's in all over the Quran. All over. So it's uh, the Quran, even when they translate the Quran into English or another foreign uh, non-Arabic language, uh, they just transfer the meaning of the Quran, you see, to the English or another language. But even the, um, if, you, if even you try to uh, study the Quran, learn about the Quran from the English translation, you're going to miss more than 60% or maybe 70% of the real meaning of the Quran. I find it one of the most difficult books I've ever tried to read in my life.